Let's take a look at a very important topic, which is the impact that the value of supply has on power and delay. To study this topic, let's look at the expression of dynamic power dissipation. Dynamic power is equal to alpha times C times V dd squared times F. So for starters, we see that dynamic power is a quadratic function of power supply, which is a very strong function of power supply, right? Uh, if we look at short circuit power, P short circuit, it is equal to I short circuit times VDD times F times T short circuit. If we look at factors that can help us minimize short circuit power, we can minimize T short circuit, which is minimized by minimizing the slope of the input voltage. But input voltage to our, our stage is the output voltage from a previous stage. So this is hard to do. We can also manage uh, dynamic uh, stat, uh, short circuit power dissipation by reducing power supply, by reducing operating frequency, or by reducing the amount of short circuit current that flows. To a first order, it seems that short circuit power is a weaker function of supply than dynamic power, because dynamic power was a quadratic function of the power supply. But in fact, if we look at short circuit current, it's actually equal to the saturation current of either the NMOS or the PMOS, especially if we have sized the gate so that it has equal uh, pull-up and pull-down resistance. And the uh, saturation current is equal to K over 2 into VDD minus V threshold all squared. So this is a very uh, strong function of supply. So in fact, power, uh, power short circuit is a cubic function of supply because it is a linear function of supply itself, and then the current itself is a quadratic function of supply. So it's an even stronger function of supply. It's a cubic function of power supply. So in short, if we look at both uh, expressions of power, the most effective way to reduce power dissipation is to reduce po uh, power supply. For dynamic power, we can also reduce power by reducing the operating frequency, by reducing the activity factor, which is usually very difficult to do because activity factor is dependent on the function of the circuit, and by reducing capacitance. The amount of switched capacitance is actually um, a function of the area of the gate. It's a function of the sizes of the transistors, but this is, again, not so easy to do. But if we look at both uh, power expressions, we notice that they are both a function of a strong function of power supply, and they're also a function of uh, operating frequency. So reducing operating frequency will reduce power. However, reducing operating frequency is not always desirable. Sometimes your application needs a certain operating frequency. You need it to operate at 100 megahertz or 200 megahertz. So it's not always useful. Uh, it's not always a useful tool. There's also a hidden um, trade-off here that we do not see. If we look at operating frequency for a uh, single gate, so this asks how often we can switch the inputs to this gate. That's what, what, what we mean by operating frequency. How often we can change the inputs of the gate and still expect to see a correct output at the end of each cycle. So operating frequency is basically the uh, reciprocal of propagation delay through the gate. And propagation delay through the gate is proportional at least to the time constant. So propagation delay is proportional to the product of resistance and capacitance, right? And so uh, propagation delay is thus proportional to VDD over 4I saturated times CL, where VDD over 4I saturated is the expression of um, equivalent resistance when we switch from high to low or low to high. What determines if we are doing high to low or low to high is the value of I sat we use. If it's the uh, saturation current for NMOS, then we're doing high to low, uh, otherwise we're doing uh, low to high. So if we look at this, we notice that TPD is then proportional to VDD over VDD minus V threshold all square. So we have um, concluded that CL is not a function of, of supply, 4 is not a function of supply. When we expand the expression of saturation current, K is not a function of supply. And so 
TPD is proportionate to VDD over VDD minus V threshold L squared, which is kind of a uh, uh, complicated function, a complicated dependency, unless we assume that VDD is significantly greater than V threshold, in which case we can um, simplify this into uh, VDD over VDD squared, which means that TPD is inversely proportional to VDD. And this is a very important conclusion. What this says is that the operating frequency of the circuit is directly proportional to the supply used, or the uh, propagation delay of the circuit is inversely proportional to the supply used. So if we increase the value of power supply we use, we can operate the circuit faster. This makes sense. If you need to operate faster, you need to increase your power supply. Why does it work this way? Why does increasing power supply reduce delay? Uh, increasing power supply reduces delay because it increases uh, the amount of current available faster than, than it increases the amount of voltage switching that we need to do. So delay dt from the uh, IV equation of the capacitor is equal to C over I times delta V. So it, it's, it's proportional to the amount of voltage we need to switch and inversely proportional to the current that's doing the switching. What we do when we increase the supply voltage is that we increase delta V, the amount of switching we need to do linearly, but we increase the available current quadratically, which is why delay will decrease. So increasing power supply is going to decrease delay, and this is um, a well-known fact. On the other hand, if we go back and look at power, power increases when we increase the power supply, and so that's the basic trade-off. The basic trade-off is, if you increase your power supply, you are going to increase the operating frequency you can act on, but that is going to, going to increase your power, not only because <clears throat> you have increased the value of power supply and power is a function of the, of the supply voltage, but also because you have increased your frequency. So there is a natural trade-off between the two. However, if we notice that power, power dissipation, is a much stronger function in supply than, uh, than delay, we can use this fact. In fact, this, is, this will be the basic fact that we can use to reduce total power dissipation in the circuit. Now, power delay product is a very important metric. As a single metric, it is probably the most useful metric to represent the performance of a circuit. Power delay product is equal to the product of delay, TPD, times power. So for a given circuit, we ask the question how much power it is dissipating as time goes by, and how much time it takes to produce one sample, which is TPD. If we multiply the two together, this gives us the amount of energy that is burned to produce a single output. The, this amount of energy is the most useful metric in determining the battery life of a certain platform, i.e. how much time will go before we have to recharge the battery again. Because if you know that the battery contains a certain amount of energy, E battery, and every sample takes a PDP to produce, then by dividing E battery, e battery by PDP, we can calculate the number of samples we can produce on a single battery charge. And that number of samples can then be translated into an amount of time depending on usage and the activity that the user has. So if we look at PDP, it's the product of, cap of, pro of power and delay. And let's consider only dynamic power in this case. So power is uh, more or less um, uh, a quadratic function of supply, but delay is an inverse quadratic is an inverse function in uh, in power supply. The, the more the power supply, the less the delay. However, notice that f also exists in the expression of of dynamic power. So, if we expand this, we have alpha C V D D square times f times T P D. But f and TPD are reciprocals of each other, and therefore power delay product is alpha C VDD square. And therefore the power delay product also increases and increases strongly, quadratically, as we increase the supply voltage.